Well, welcome to the podcast, John. How are you today? Chris, it's a pleasure to be here, buddy. Why don't you tell everyone where we're at? We're here in Hotlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Great to be in the ATL. The ATL, that's right. And a uh, beautiful hotel here, part of the Marriott Autograph Collection. And uh, we tried to sneak up to their rooftop area to record this podcast, which had this beautiful scenic view of Atlanta. And uh, technically, the roof wasn't open yet. So what happened, John? Yeah, we were the cool kids trying to get into the club. We didn't know the club wasn't open yet. And we (laughs) got in, and I guess they had some security cameras on. And Yeah, Yeah, I think we got busted on the security cameras. So they they kicked our podcast out. We don't have a huge budget like some of the other orthodontic podcasts. That probably would have gotten the rooftop. So now we're here in the lobby. So please excuse people checking in. Um, But yeah, we had a wonderful dinner last night, didn't we, John? We did. We did. It It was good to meet up. Yeah, for sure. And I know we've met in person before, but I think it's the first time we've maybe spent some quality time together. And I, I learned a lot about you, and you have a really interesting background. So John, tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's the immigrant story. Uh, my parents were from Vietnam, and in 75, uh, during the fall of Saigon, they fled, you know, communism, oppression on these rickety boats. And, um, you know, our family came here with pennies in their pockets and all they really had were these seeds these these asian seeds because we were farmers back there mm-hmm. um and so when i grew up we, we did what i called ghetto farming on the east side of la you know we were in the mm-hmm. city and and any anywhere there was a patch of open land they would just start planting mm. and we didn't know any better we didn't know that that wasn't legal right yeah but um when you're driving through southern california there's um on the side of the freeway there's always these kids selling oranges and you know lemons and Mm -hmm. Um, those types of things and that's what I did you know um, early on and uh, yeah it was a crazy experience I think you you learn a lot going through those types of things so you guys were literally like roadside almost like with like a like vegetable stand right yeah yeah and 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 you know you you learn at early age sort of what makes people tick what gets people to buy you know buying decisions you learn about like commodities and what that what that is Mm -hmm. and you learn about um, how to separate yourself by being different Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, eventually over time, we raised enough money to um, have our own plot of land. And um, our house kind of eventually became this place for other immigrants fleeing other countries. Um, oh, wow. You know, Cambodians, Laotians. Um, and we kind of became this halfway home for refugees. Wow. Um, and it was, a, it was a great learning experience because you, you learn a lot about no matter who you are or where you're from, there's always a way to contribute. Yeah, right, f- for sure. And, you know, farming-wise, you, you learn that um, no matter what happens, you still farm, you still work. If it's rain, drought, doesn't matter. The other thing I learned is that I really hated farming. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the story goes that uh, as soon as I got to college, you know, in the, in the 90s, the first thing I did was I dropped out. Mm. And a lot of people don't know this, but... Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a you know engineer by training, and so um, that was when I joined my first tech startup, hmm. and that was in yeah the the late '90s. So what college did you drop out of? UCLA. UCLA. Yeah, first first week of college. Wow. Yeah, and, my and mom, coming from an Asian family, like well, like how did that sit? My my mom almost killed me. Really? Yeah. Uh, but you know, I told her I said, "Mom, if you let me drop out, I'll be the Asian doctor son you always wanted." And, yeah. and she she went for that. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, well, she 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 bought my pitch. And, you know, <laughs> eventually she got what she wanted. But, uh, you know, was, um, Chris, we were talking yesterday during dinner. You, yeah. you know, you want to hear a little bit about my, my tech story. So, um, you know, we, we had this I, uh, idea at the time that um, the Internet was something that was new and was booming. Mm-hmm. And um, if maybe we found a way to create an online online platform for vendors to offer their products. We thought we had this thesis that maybe consumers would go on, find what they want, click a button, and then it would show up at their houses. And I think we call it online shopping now. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like Amazon, right? Yeah. Um, but, but this you know, was way before. This was 1999, Yeah, yeah. Right? Th- this was 98, 99. I think Amazon was trying to do it too. Um, but they were selling books. Yeah. Uh, but we, we, we learned a lot, you know, during that time. I mean, number one, you learn that, um, the power of ideas, the power of venture capital, how fast things can grow. Mm-hmm. Um, the company did make entrepreneur magazines list of 100 hottest growing companies. Wow. And you know, I was 19 years old, 
driving around in Ferraris, Lamborghinis. What? You know, yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's a crazy lifestyle. Yeah. And 19 and... Booking booking 737s for three, 400 of my friends to fly to the... That's you insane. Know, uh, West Coast, it's a party. But... Wow. The, 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 the most important thing, though, that happened was the tech bust. Yeah, the bubble burst. Yeah, because the bubble burst was one of the best things that ever happened to me because at that point, you learn that the things you own don't own you. And mm. what you define as success should be defined by you, not everybody else. Yeah. So that point, I went back to school and started you know, finishing up my degree in electrical engineering. Yeah, and so you went back to UCLA, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. And so what was the School of Engineering like? I mean, was it similar to dental school? Yeah, you know, um, it's interesting, right? Because I'd say, no, it's, com- it's actually completely different. When I first got to dental school, I was actually a little bit shocked. I didn't take my first multiple choice test since the SAT until I got to dental school, right? Wow. And, and everything was just about, is the answer A, B, C, or D? Mm-hmm. In engineering, I mean, most of my tests were just a blank piece of paper, hmm. right? And the doctor, the, the professor would um, write, you know, a question on the, on the board and your job was just to derive the answer. Hmm. And I remember um, this, there was this one final, I will never forget it. Um, the professor wrote on the board <laughs> that uh, you have an electron hanging from a weightless string. Hmm. And beneath the electron is a magnet that oscillates on and off at a certain rate. Please derive the equation that explains how the pendulum movement of the electron will behave. I already failed this test. And and I'm out. and what he was really the, the the answer of those questions were what we would call Maxwell's equations, mm-hmm. which is um, the equations that define electromagnetism and how electri- electricity and, mag- and magnets interact. That's why all of our iPhones charge through magnets, right? Like and, cheat charging. Yes, yes, exactly. And so um, what he was doing is he was helping us derive the answers to these equations as opposed to sometimes how we're taught in dentistry is this is the answer, just memorize it. Yeah, more like spoon-fed yeah, the answers, right? You know, and I will tell you... Um, I scored like a 8% on that test. The curve was 10%. Mm-hmm. So I got like a C, C minus. The mm-hmm. A was like 15, 18%. Wow. And I think, you know, going to, we're speaking, we're speaking to a lot of, you know, um, orthodontists here. I think life, that is life though. If, if you can go into life or business knowing 20%, mm-hmm. that's an A. Yeah. Right? Because the world is unknown. Mm-hmm. And I think, when I graduated from dental school and orthodontic school and we were just so used to A, B, C, D, or E, and then you open your practice and you're like, well, where's the rule book here? Where are the multiple choice questions here? And there yeah. is no multiple choice options. Yeah, You got to define it. And I think for the innovators out there, I think it's okay if you don't know all the answers. If you have an inkling, you have a 20% idea, but you're so passionate about it, pursue it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. an A+. Plus. So do you think your engineering mindset really sort of spurned that innovative attitude and trying to derive the answers of life? I think the engineering mindset, the immigrant mindset, mm-hmm. the, the, the not being scared to fail, not being scared to put yourself out there was what motivated me to take the risk that I did. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so what happened when you finished your engineering degree? Did you go immediately to dental school from there? No, I actually um, got a job at uh, Boeing. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, gone to aerospace, and it was an amazing ride in itself. So, so you were an aerospace engineer? Yes, yes. Uh, we worked, um, I crazy. worked. I worked on some top secret military things. Um, I guess it's uh, the... the, the the time frame's been long enough now, I'll tell you. Um, I worked on the uh, Air Force One. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, designing some things for Air Force One. Uh, and um, the point I'm making, though, is that, you know, venture capital is great. Startups are great because you, 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 you see what the power of ideas mm-hmm. and capital that's willing to invest into those ideas can do, mm-hmm. right? But with aerospace engineering, you find out what the power of people and vision and possibilities can do. I mean, you know, Boeing was doing things like putting man on the moon, 
you know, satellites, right? Lasers. Wow. I mean, it, yeah. was, it was crazy. There were 100,000. Sort of infinite possibilities. Yeah, 100,000 engineers just thinking about how we can do things differently, hmm. right? Um, so that was a great ride. But as I said, you know, uh, my mom one day came up to me and said, you know, John, you remember, you remember what you promised me oh, when you dropped it out? All, it all comes back. Hey, mama never forgets. So um, I dropped out of engineering and um, applied to a couple of dental schools. Mm-hmm. And fortunately, uh, UCLA admitted me. And I went back to UCLA again a couple of years later to do dentistry. Yeah. So what was dental school like at UCLA? And, and again, when I told you, you know, dental school was completely same school, but completely different mindset. Hmm. Right. And I think, um, don't, don't get me wrong. I love dentistry, but you know, in, in engineering, it was a lot, it was a lot about what was possible. You were expected to ask questions. You were mm-hmm. expected to challenge the status quo mm-hmm. because if the iPhone 10 years from now was the same iPhone as it was today, there's something wrong hmm. in dentistry. You know, every time I asked a question, I kind of felt like, I don't know. I, I felt like I was different. <laughs> I, I felt like people didn't like that, you know. Yeah. So you felt like dental school, you were just more, this is, this is what you do. This is what you do to maybe fit in and, yeah. and learn the program. And, and I, 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 I felt a lot to shut up, answer the questions, and move on. Yeah. 